The genteel life in Adolf Hitler's inner circle was stunning contrast to the atrocities he masterminded outside. Gertrude Junger was at the core of this inner circle. Her husband was an SS officer. She hosted her Führer's dinners with the highest Nazi officials. Her social life was Joseph Goebbels, Martin Bormann, Heinrich Himmler. These names that we have read all of our lives, names like Martin Bormann, Goebbels, Goering, were they not fearsome creatures to you? They were friends to you? No, they were not friends, but were not, they were not fierce features, uh, creatures, actually, because if that's, I think it's a very big mistake to think they looked like monsters, all of them. They had a very nice facade, and even Goering was a very handsome man to, to talk to. Goebbels, I, I met him not very often. He, uh, he was only at the official mm, dinner parties at the Birkhof. And he was an excellent entertainer, and he was a very um, uh, intelligent and spiritual, um, amusing man. So it was not that you you had just a shower of fears if you if you met one of those people. Hitler the monster was possessed of an evil mesmerism, cloaked in charm, passion, hypnotic power. He could bend even the iron will of a disciplined army officer. When the officers came out of the conference, military situation conference, and then they talked and said, oh, it's terrible. I came today here and, and I was so, I had made up my mind to tell Hitler what, what's my point of view. All of a sudden, he interrupted me and he started to talk and he, he talked and talked and talked, and all I was going to say was, was gone. And I was uh, standing here, and I was convinced that this man has, is right. His control over his coterie held until the final day. When it became clear that Germany had lost the war, Hitler took refuge in this bunker under the Berlin Chancellery. He was accompanied by Eva Braun, the Goebbels family, and members of his staff. They included Frau Gertraud Jünger. Hitler refused all opportunities to escape, desperately afraid he would die at the hands of his enemies, as had Mussolini. Most people in the bunker also chose to remain underground with him to the end. Joseph Goebbels fatally injected his six children with poison. He and his wife committed suicide. These names who blackened our history books could not bear to live in a world without Adolf Hitler. In the final days, Adolf Hitler's physical and mental powers faded along with the defeated Third Reich. Hitler had become a pale and weak version of himself. He discussed suicide over dinner. It had become a matter of fact. I think he intended to use his pistol. But uh, on the other hand, he said, it can be dangerous if you put it on your head and you just um, hurt the nerve of your eyesight and you can get blind and you survive. So he talked about putting it into his mouth. But Eva Braun would not have wanted, that's not a woman's way to die, to put a pistol in your mouth. No, she didn't die no, that way, no, did no. you? She has a capsule of cyanide in her pocket and she, she even said, I want to dress nice and I would, I would have a nice hair to, to dye because I want to be a pretty bunny. Cyanide was the method most preferred. Each was given a capsule obtained personally by Heinrich Himmler. But then Hitler had become paranoid. He trusted nobody and nothing, including the capsules. He tried one out on his beloved dog, Blondie. Blondie died instantly. As for Eva Braun, the woman he never married, he decided to marry her April 28, 1945. That was two days before their planned suicide. It was a grim ceremony in their underground tomb. And I think it was just a gest of, of gratitude to Eva Braun, who had, who had lived on his side in, in, in secret so long, and 
just was ready to die with him. According to Gertrud Junger, Hitler committed suicide on April 30th, 1945. She heard the gunshot. Nobody could ever find the bodies of Hitler and Eva Braun. What happened? Ah, oh, they were burned. They were burned outside the bunker. There was a bomb a crater of the, of the bombing, and um, they were mm, spread ben, uh, benzene. Uh, gasoline, yes, and then they were, they were burned. And what finally did he do? Did he put the pistol in his mouth? I'm not sure if he did that. I think he shot in his, in his head. I didn't saw him after he shot himself. And I forgot to ask, actually. It was not interesting anymore for me when he was dead, how he did it. After Hitler's death, Frau Junge was among those in the bunker who escaped through what remained of Berlin. She lives modestly now in Munich on a small pension from her husband. Forty years down the road, when you press Adolf Hitler's secretary, Frau Gertrude Junge will say that now she feels shame. Have you suffered as a result of being, knowing that you were part of this genocide? I'm still suffering, actually. I'm still very much ashamed. And I can't forgive myself that I was part, that I participated in, in the service of that man. Adolf Hitler, a concerned employer, a gracious host, a devoted lover, a petter of dogs. Adolf Hitler, the madman of history.